So the break-off error from Stedman, only proving to cost him 22 points when it might have been many more. I always find playing those type of shots that if you're going to play that shot, if you play it with right-hand side and take the cue ball up towards Bork off the side cushion, normally it's always guaranteed to be on something, whether the blue or one of the Bork colours. But John played it with the opposite side, with left-hand side, thinking he was coming back for the black. Red on the left side cushion, just making things a little difficult for Craig Stedman to play this cue ball with a lot of left hand side or right hand side to avoid the red. Just see how he plays it. Well, ultra thin, either way, he was in a little bit of trouble. So, second bite of the cherry for John Higgins.
13. Yes, it looks like that miss hit safety shot from Craig Stedman. It's going to be very costly. More red required after this black. Yeah, could have played that better. I still expect him to pot this, but always like to be right behind the shot. Nice frame ball, applauded by the crowd. Judging it perfectly now. Sixty-two. Left himself a nice little angle to nudge that red near the middle pocket. Unless it goes. Nicely done. Sixty-eight. How confident was that? Chances now of a 501st career century. Well, there's the commentator's curse as he misses the black. Rueful smile from Higgins, but it's irrelevant because that clinical break was enough to see him draw level at one frame apiece. FOE.TV So one frame apiece here in this Arcade and Paul Hunter Classic second round match. The round of 64 between John Higgins and Craig Stedman. Stedman winning the opening frame and Higgins replying with a 70 plus break to take frame number two. First of four goes through to the last 32. And Higgins has the honour 
at the start of the third frame. Well, it was a mistake, but he hasn't left anything easy. It was never easy. Well, that was a confident pot. And nicely on the red. Didn't hold back with that one. Well, after the Lord Mayor show, potted a terrific blue and misses a relatively simple red. Perfectly paced cue ball. He's brought the red up. Can John Higgins see it? A little fortunate to have landed behind the brown. He played the cue ball to the cushion. Just looks from John Higgins as he left this red on to the centre. Difficult cueing, but doesn't need to do much with the cue ball. What? Well, he did exceptionally well with the cue ball. I thought he was just going to drop it in and have a fairly straight blue to the port corner. Very good shot. Six. Seven. 
7. Important to stay high on the black if you can. Thirteen. And again, that was a delicate positional shot he was playing. And to have pinpoint accuracy with that shot. Just come a little too far. End of break. Craig Stedman, 20. <coughs> there it is again. Just wanted to stop there. I've got to say that John Higgins' safety isn't as good as it normally is. One of the best safety players I've ever seen. Don't win the World Championship four times without being very special in that department. And once again, he catches it thick this time. We can't tell from our commentary position. The problem is, if he doesn't take it on and he doesn't get the cue ball close to the cushion, then Craig Stedman will take it on. Oh. Well, surely any contact at all with this red will knock it in.
Oh, would you believe it? How has he missed that one? Yes, admittedly, he hit the other red first, but have another look at this. Serious of the pocket. And still, you expected him to pot it. Incredible. I think Stedman made the assumption, didn't he, that it had to drop, and apparently it didn't. And it could be very expensive. Could very well be. And expensive, shouldn't it, Phil? Nothing safe. Seven. He's overhit that one, but he's okay. Yes, it's just wrong side of this, the red to the left corner. Cue ball going to. on it. Thirty. Well, he's got that little screwing extension that goes on his cue. He must have left it in the dressing room last time round in his earlier session because he slotted one on the end of it. And the slot on one is nowhere near as good as that one that screws into the queue. Still wondering, no doubt, Stedman, how that red failed to drop into the pocket when it seemed certain to do so with any kind of contact. It was from that error that Higgins was presented with this opportunity.
44. Well, once again, could have done with being a little closer to, to this pink. This is just in that position where it's missable. Well, the black's on as well, so. Not a problem. It's proving to be pretty hard work this break for Higgins. All sorts of contraptions required for him to maintain good position. This time it's the spider. 52. As he works his way towards the finishing post in this third frame. 26 points the lead. Just three reds remaining. Fortunately, well, this red just behind the black. One more red will suffice then for Higgins, red and a colour. Sixty-seven. Well, that should seal this third frame. of 70 from John Higgins after that error from Stedman when he failed to pot the red hanging over the pocket and it's Higgins 2, Stedman 1. and find the latest results and features with Eurosport's live score. With Eurosport.com's free application available on tablets and smartphones, gain access to all the articles and videos from Eurosport.com, plus get the latest news in real time. Check out the latest results, fixtures and tables and follow your favourite sports events live. The last 64 of the Arcade and Paul Hunter Classic. John Higgins looking for his second straight win of the day in Germany. Leads Craig Stedman, 30-year-old from one. Stedman having taken the first frame of the match. But ruining that error for three, where he seemed certain to pot a red that was hanging right over the lip. three to edge ahead remember four is the target for victory couldn't have got much closer So no breaks in these best of sevens. 
as we just look at that attempted long red in it again. That's a very good return from where he was. Well, that's one thing he didn't want, full ball kiss on the yellow. Let's left this red on to the right corner. We've already had some drama here on the first day of the Paul Hunter Classic with Ken Doherty, former world champion, of course, making his first ever competitive 147 maximum. It came in his match against Julian. Doherty, of course, famously missing a maximum in the final of the Masters against Matthew Stevens some years. Eighty thousand pounds and saw it wobble in the jaws. Magical maximum to his CV, Joe. Yeah, what a terrific achievement for Ken Doherty. Must be playing well. We have seen players make maximum breaks and lose matches many times. Seven. That old adage, it only wins you one frame. But what a frame. Didn't want to be going into the black in potting this red to the right corner. Hence taking the red to the centre, try and come back down the table for that red, but the yellow looks to be just in the way of playing that shot. Needs to miss the middle pocket jaw. Played for the red behind the black that time round. Contact with the middle pocket jaw has left a very fine cut here. And he's got an angle on both the pink and the green to come down for that red just next to the black. He's played this one well. 26. Q. 
queuing well now, isn't he? Yes, he's got the pace of the table as well, more importantly. May I just play the cannon to the two reds? 35. No, just made sure of the red. Wasn't hard enough. We saw Craig Stedman pop one of those in the first frame. Well, you see the red there, just leave the cushion from the moment Higgins struck it. It just didn't have the legs. One. I didn't play that one well. This is a tricky black. Nicely played and well played. Get in the cannon. Unfortunate to leave himself hampered over that red. And this is now a difficult black. And he's got to play it at pace to come onto a red. Craig Stedman, nine. And that's what made him miss it. If he'd have just rolled it in, I'm sure he would have potted it. But had to play it at pace to come out for the red. Well, he's considering going into that cluster there. No attempt at the bust. Six. Using the black to go into the reds, and it's just about getting out of side on the cue ball here. Too much side, and you miss them. Fourteen. Forty-seven points to lead then for Higgins. It was tight, but managed to pot it.
So one more red. He needed two or three chances this frame, but it won't make any difference now. As long as you win the frame, that's the main thing. Three snookers required. Six. John Higgins, 36. No sizable breaks in that frame then from John Higgins, but a 35 and a 36 enough for his third straight frame. He's just one away from victory now. He leads Craig Stedman three frames to one. into day. A single idea can change the world. A single sword can turn the tides of war. One player can create an empire. You can make the difference. Sign up now for Forge of Empires at foe.tv. All your favourite events from Eurosport and Eurosport 2 are also available on Eurosport Player. Eurosport, Eurosport. Additional live coverage on the bonus channels, plus an extensive on demand. So John Higgins very much in charge of this last 64 match at the Paul Hunter Classic in Firth, Germany. He's won three straight frames against 30-year-old Craig Stedman from England. And the Scot now just one away from a place in the round of 32. Well, it was a long way from that one. And because he missed it by so much, the cue ball has gone into that pack of reds. You could see the cue arm there just move over to the right. for the red just to the left of the black and that opens the way for the black into the right and left pocket that's so why he's such a great break builder John Higgins straight away is thinking of how do I get the black free
He was tough on the blue, but decided instead of dropping it in to play it off the cushion, come down for that red, and now he's opened things up in one shot. 15. Yes, for all the success that Higgins has had down the years, and 11-12 when he failed to get past the 22. round of 16 in any of the major events. You watch Ronnie O'Sullivan match his tally of four world titles in the spring, having been soundly beaten by the now retired Stephen Hendry in their second round match at the Crucible. So I think Higgins will have plenty of ambition left despite his many achievements. He still feels there's plenty more silverware to add before he hangs up his cue for good. And the very fact that he's changed his cue, I think, suggests that he's a man who still has plenty of ambition about what he can achieve in this game that he has dominated for so many years. Yes, yeah, some people when they see the winning line are scared of going over it, but not this man. And that applies in most sports. Get to a stage where you may be able to win the match. But if you haven't got that inner belief that you can win it, more often than not, something... Well, that's what he intended to do. He's finished up on this red to the right corner, but that wasn't the one he played for. Had he played for that, he would have just stunned off that left side cushion, come towards the red, trying to go into them, got too close to the middle pocket, just caught a little bit of the jaw. The cue ball just traveling that extra couple of inches. So a nice 50 break. Craig Stedman can't afford any more mistakes. His safety's got to be safe, and that's not it. There is a red to the left corner. I'm pretty sure he'll play the cannon to the red just to the right of it to hold for the black. That's exactly what he played. I 
and he knows had that gone in he would have been shaking hands Stedman's had very little table time in the last couple of frames desperately needs to string a few together he's a half chance here he's well that could be his last shot Played with a touch of right hand side to avoid the six. Three points the difference. He's just had a quick glance at the scoreboard. Red colour red. Fourteen. Well this black would be enough. Knowledgeable crowd confirming that Higgins is twenty-one over the winning line, barring snooker. And Stedman 22. isn't going to get a chance to play for those. Another solid performance here from John Higgins. Three breaks in excess of 50. 27. 28. He's flowed nicely when he's been in amongst them. Safety play, still not as good as he would like it uncharacteristic errors from time to time but he's feeling his way back towards his very best in these early stages sorry I'll be feeling the nerves a little but he's now what about that for a shot lots of right hand side able for the red super shot and using the angles of the pocket to get that cue ball away from the ball cushion With the pressure off, these players can produce the extraordinary. He sensed that Higgins could pop these with his eyes shut. Should he choose to. But finishing with a flourish. The yellow stays out, but the handshake from Craig Stedman confirms that John Higgins is a comprehensive winner in this round of 64 match at the Arcaden Paul Hunter Classic. Higgins with a string of good breaks, winning four straight frames after losing the first. He's beaten Craig Stedman by four frames to one, and he is safely through to the last 32. Four times world champion finding his feet to the new season and a disappointing season last time out. So Higgins safely through. More snooker coming up shortly on Eurosport International. That's it for now here on number two. Craig Stedman always up against it, against the legend that is John Higgins. Four times a world champion, three times a UK champion, twice a winner of the Masters and, of course, a former world number one. Stedman made a good start, took the opening frame, 
and had a few chances in the frames to follow, but Higgins class told in the end. Remember, the snooker is back very shortly in around 20 minutes time on Eurosport International. That's it as regards the snooker here on Eurosport 2 for now. Coming up next for you. And we'll be back tomorrow for more action from the Arcaden.